I'm Lena, and after many years of hard work and dedication and a lot of lessons as a new entrepreneur, I'm releasing the very first collection of my swimwear line called Love Luana New Vintage Swimwear. The line is dedicated to my mother, Luana Harrington Olson, and is inspired by the classic surfing lifestyle that she embodied. I'm recreating the styles of the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s. And I'm stuck to the 50s and 60s to launch the line because it has to do with my mom. It's all about her, it's a tribute to her, and so that was her era of swimsuits and her surfing life, and so that's what we've kind of kicked off to launch our line with is that era. The 30s and the 40s kind of stepped back in time in my grandma's era when she was surfing and body surfing and making her own swimsuits. It kind of covers that era. So those are my four decades that I'm kind of focusing on. The surfing family background really starts with my grandma and grandpa, Boss and Margaret Harrington, back in the 30s, Corona Del Mar, and they were just, they were beach kids. Um, they hung out with a very, a, one of their very best friends who became a, a surfing legend and icon, um, Lauren Harrison. And his, he had a sister who married a Hawaiian and he would go back and forth and visit them and surfing was big in Hawaii, not here. And so he would come back, and now they were body surfing Corona Del Mar Jetty in the 30s. He would go over to Hawaii and watch the surfers on the beach and come back and then show my grandma and grandpa and this handful of friends that they all hung out with in Corona Del Mar what they were doing. And then they started making surfboards. And so in the middle to late 30s, my grandparents, Harringtons, the Harrisons, and their gang were instrumental in starting the sport of surfing on our Southern California coastline. And my mom knew nothing more than beach life and surfing. San Onofre was her hot spot for, for surfing and my grandpa built a shack at San Onofre and that was kind of, that was built to kind of, for shade, there was no shade and so it was built so that it could cover the, the wives and the children and they had kind of a little hut because for decades they actually spent their life from morning until night, surfing, fishing, dancing in the evening to the ukuleles and so this is how, my mother grew up with this phenomenal life, style, um, this surfing life and their friend, uh, John Severson, he starts Surfer Magazine. And he ha actually happened to be my dad's ceramics teacher in high school. And his brother, Joey, was my dad's classmate. So they all just, there was a small group of kids in Capitol Beach that hung out. And my mom was, you know, one of the very few girls even surfing at the time. And he's kind of like, hey, Luana, you got to be first girl in Surfer Magazine, and so she was. About a couple months before she died in 2006, I thought I need to do something to honor her, a tribute to her, and God, my brain started like, like I was given this divine message to do something, and it was like it instantly came to my mind, you're gonna develop a vintage swimsuit line and it was kind of like, am I really? And I began to develop this swimsuit line in my head from beginning to end in a course of like three years, but it was about two months prior to my mom's death that I got the idea. And because I, I know I'm the way that I am and that I feel like I can do just about anything is because she told me there wasn't anything I couldn't do. You wanna do that? Go for it. I wish she could have lived longer but it wasn't part of the plan, and I accept that. Um, part of me wishes I did it sooner so that she could have been a part of it to participate, but I also know it wasn't supposed to happen that way either. So I know that she would just be grateful and thankful and, and say, keep going, girl. There's not a thing you can't do.
and live it, do it, enjoy it. So I just started the research, finding a manufacturer, and again, not, not being a fashion designer, I had this wild, crazy idea, and just wasn't sure how it was all gonna fall into place, so I did a whole lot of praying and said, okay, Lord, whatever you think I'm supposed to do, you're gonna to have to just like figure it all out for me because I'm not a fashion designer and I don't know how this whole thing works, but I'm gonna start somewhere and just roll with it. And as that was four years ago-ish, and everybody, the, my, the, my team players, have all been just kind of like handed to me like they fell out of the sky and I'm doing it. And I started developing the hang tag that was going to hang on the suits. And I have all of these vintage surfing photographs of my grandparents and, and my mom and I knew that that hang tag was going to have a vintage photograph on it of something, of some of them, one of them. So I started doing some prototypes, got together with a graphics, graphic artist, and um, we started rolling forward with it, and, and that's how it really started. When I really started diving into it, which was about four years ago, um, my husband got sick, and so, I, I, did as, I would do as much as I could and I'd kind of put it on the back burner and kind of t tend to him and kind of went back and forth. And there's a little tea salon in downtown Orange called Paris in a Cup. And I found them quite a few years ago in a magazine, subscribed to their email, and periodically they would give workshops and lectures and I got this email from them um, just describing a workshop that they were going to have called Launch Your Creativity and that we, they were going to have five women speakers and do you have an idea of something that you want to do, you've been doing, don't know what to do next and sign up for this workshop and I would delete it. I would read that email and think, Launch Your Creativity, do you have an idea, don't know what to do next, yeah, I fit all of that. and. So I signed up for it, $65, okay, sign me up. The first speaker to speak was a lady named Jane Button. I signed up for her mentoring program and it was a small group of entrepreneurial women who had their own businesses and Jane was our mentor and we would meet like a summit meeting and we would help each other on our businesses and each time I went, Steve was a little bit worse, and so that following week, he went into the hospital, and for the last time. And so, for those first few days, he was coherent, and he knew he was dying, and so then he sat on the edge of his hospital bed, and he looked at me, and he said, you have to do your bathing suit business. And we cried. And I just looked at him and thought, oh gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a widow. And so he, that was our last one hour conversation. And he died two weeks later. And I, it took me a couple months to get my groove back on. Got into some grief counseling, but it was it was part of the driving force to help me put one foot in front of the other. I'd have done it anyway. However, it really helped kind of give me that, that really that extra push to, to get going. But because of who I am and who I was raised by, um, it's just like, you know what, get back in the saddle, get back on the horse, brush yourself off and get going. And that's really who I am. I had done a lot of research on manufacturers. I knew that I wanted to manufacture in the U.S. And so I concentrated on the L.A. area because that's kind of the hub for fashion and, and garment district area. So I started doing research and it took me quite a while actually to finally, I 
picked a few, started calling, anyway, picked my manufacturer. And I liked the fact that this particular one was all in-house everything. Everything was done from, from beginning to end under one roof. At that time, not knowing a lot about the industry, just kind of limping along, figuring things out. And then I've since then learned it's not always the best thing. But however, it got me from point A to B, C, and D, and E so far. So I started with my manufacturer in the beginning and seemed to be working okay at first. And then uh, I met up now then with my production manager who I have now, um, John McLeod. And now he came on board. Now he's stepping in and now he's helping me and seeing, and he'd had a swimsuit company so he knows the industry very well. Now he's helping me and, and now we got another set of eyes looking at the whole program here and he's telling me, Lena, you know, this, this, and this, and has she done this? And well, anyway, long story short, she, we kind of fired her and she fired us all on the same day. Anyway, we had to move forward and then got referred to who we have now, um, Gladys, our pattern maker with um, um, Dama Designs. And that was a blessing in disguise. It was, so yeah, these things happen. They do have, it's just part, and I, I knew, I always wondered when, but I knew something would happen because that's just with any, I don't care what you're doing, I don't care what industry you're in or, or what job you're doing, of course that's gonna happen. But I knew that I wanted to be able to embrace it and learn from it and move forward and not, you know, let it just destroy me. I'm thrown in the towel because that's not who I am anyway. So um, we moved on and we got our pattern maker and then I knew I needed to hire a web designer and flew off to Austin, Texas and met with her, had a great time and then down the road, that didn't work out, had to find a new web designer and it was like, but, and all the while this is happening, because it's a fashion, you're in the fashion industry, you have seasons and you have to plan seasons of ahead, um, for collections, it, it put us behind. So technically in the fashion industry, we're behind. But however, the flip side of that for me and knowing how everything works out and happens for a reason and everything's very timely and divinely orchestrated, I'm where I'm exactly supposed to be at this very moment in time. So, Forget about the fashion industry. I am where I'm supposed to be at this time. And all of these little hurdles um, happen. And, you know, you can't, you just don't let them get in the way. Because I, again, I think going through two deaths of two very special um, people in my life, there's not too much that really gets me down. God only knows what the next um, hurdle will be, but we'll embrace it and move forward. As my team grew and we started developing this line and things really started to visually begin to happen, I will say that it was my production manager, John McLeod, who took my business from, and he's heard me say this to people and I've said it to him, from about five miles per hour to about 500 miles per hour. Because I was working and I was busy doing other things, it was hard for me to just focus on it, but it was it was um, the nitro that I needed. And we joined forces and he saw my vision. He helped me to continue um, that vision and took it on like it was his own. But when I, started going down into the garment district with John and we started buying fabric and then we started taking things to our pattern maker and having our samples made and these pieces these bathing suits started coming to life and we'd go check in with Gladys and see what she had done the last couple of weeks and now these things are like hanging on a rack and I can actually see them and it's like it was very surreal and very exciting and I would take some of those pictures 
of them hanging and I would post them on Facebook and of course everybody else is just as excited as I am. And I thought, oh my gosh, this thing is really, it's happening. I'll tell you the event that actually changed everything is the Hollywood Fashion Show at the Aventine Restaurant in Hollywood. It was a very, very surreal, fun, crazy event. I couldn't even believe we'd actually gotten to that point. And from behind the scenes, for myself, and seeing our little group of friends and my dad from the behind the wall and getting our models ready to walk out on this runway, I couldn't see them once they left us, I couldn't see them walking down the ramp, but I could see the faces of our friends and my dad off to the side. That was priceless to me. I, I stood back and I said, you know, my mom would be loving this right now. And I thought, she's, I know she's watching me. And I just, that's, that's when I really knew that something was happening was that night. Now my life is so different. I have this whole new chapter of life that I'm living and I embraced it and all of the newness of it and, and I love it and I love not knowing what the next day is going to bring. However, I, I'm, I'm on a pathway, I'm, I'm pursuing something, but yet along with that you don't know what that journey is going to be like tomorrow and that's something I've learned with experiencing death of people you know you're going along through life and you have your whole appointment book all scheduled what you're going to do today and tomorrow and then death happens when it's supposed to and it changes and it rocks your world and you have to roll with it and um, so I've learned what I'm made of and that this isn't a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot at it. And so you better live it, because that's what life is for, it's for living. And so if you have something you think you wanna do, you better do it, because what I've learned from losing a mother at 62, and a husband who was, he was quite a bit older than me, was 60, very young still, that life is but a vapor and it's gone. Something I have learned, um, about entrepreneurs and growing up is because you're always on to the next thing, the next thing, you got to block and focus or nothing gets done. So that's part of when you're doing something for yourself, um, anything, business, life, um, and again, and entrepreneurs in general, we get we get a lot going on at one time and we got lists and we got a pile, our plate, plates full. Um, if you want something to succeed, you have to really focus on that. Of course, and our tendency is our mind just begins to like go over here. You got to bring yourself back in. So you really have to block and focus so that that one thing you really want to do actually gets done and will move forward and that is something that I have I've done with this is yeah I've got other ideas and we got board shorts and wetsuits and a whole other lines of things it's I, I, I need to focus on this collection and get it done so that we can move on to the next one my collection comes out for spring of 2014. We have already started accumulating fabrics for our next collection that has to technically be ready for January for 2015. And so we are working on that. And I have lots, lots of, I have enough, probably enough ideas in my head to last me the next 10, 15 years. Um, Wetsuits, board shorts, men's the whole men's line, children's line, lingerie, we got it all. Love Luana is is gonna be around for a while. We got we got a lot to do.